Hello friends, welcome back. I am really, really excited for today's video because this is my friend Gabby Rivera. She <laughs> is one of the kindest and sweetest and most wonderful and gentle people I know. And she's here because she wrote a book. And I have talked about it on Tumblr a little bit and I have been dying to make this video <laughs> and I am just so appreciative that you are here. So hello. Hello. So the book is called Juliet Takes a Breath. It is available right now on Amazon. It's the queer YA book that I wish I had when I was little. Gabby, who is Juliet? The person who is taking a breath. Oh my gosh. The, the hope is that Juliet is a little bit of everybody. Juliet is like awkward and brown and chubby and cute and curious. She's this girl who is from the Bronx who has figured out that she likes other girls and so that's not the main issue here. Like she's comfortable with it. But there are pieces of her that she hasn't really figured out. Like she hasn't figured out, is she a feminist? She hasn't really found like a community of people of color. She is just trying to like make it in this world. She is just trying to decide what she is, but also like explore who she could be. One of the things that makes it stand out so much is because you dive head on into like what these multiple identities mean to people, right? What it is to not only be queer, but to be a feminist, to be a person of color. Can you just talk a little bit about, about all of that and how you, how you made that happen so beautifully? In my experience in like queer community, like everyone is talking about the way identities intersect and like the way we experience our identities or claim them, um, or the way some are pressed upon us, uh, whether we want them to be there or not. So for example, Julia is a Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx and I think that generally speaking in mainstream media she's given one narrative. She could like you know, maybe drop out of high school. She could like be the chick on Law and Order who gets in a gang fight or like gets pregnant or is murdered. There isn't a lot going on um, as far as like nuance and like layers to it, right? And I wanted to give her a chance to be like more than one type of person to really go into what it is to flesh out your identities. So without giving anything away, one of the biggest uh, narrative themes here is about allyship and about mm. what it means to be a thoughtful and helpful ally. Tell me about that. Allyship can be exhausting. Allyship can be exhausting for queer people, for people of color. Many of us experience like varying levels of privilege, right? How do you play with that? How do you support that and make it a discussion on allyship without putting all the work on the like African American character or the Latino character, like how do you show people struggling and holding allyship and tension um, in a way that is fair, in a way that like kind of honors everyone's struggle. If you're new to these worlds and to these communities and these identities like Juliet is, she's not immersed in a queer community. She's just coming to the table for the first time, like she doesn't even know what an ally is. And I wanted to create a situation that like models good behavior. Not that I have any answer, but just just to offer to queer people, young people, like, hey, like, here are ways to do that. Here are just some examples of, you know, how you can own your feelings and feel hurt by something and move forward. And here are some ways where maybe you could like not be an asshole to somebody, you know, like. <laughs> just a thought. <laughs> Tell me about what it was like to write it. The first iteration of it was devoid of politics, identity. It was like this fluffy, magical story that like, I have to be honest, that I think we've seen in a lot of white people movies, right? Where it's like, coming of age, summer, it's so hard to be young and in love and woo, look at me and oh, I'm so sad. And then they play like the indie song and there's like a montage and then like, and then like, the girl falls in love with the like nebbishy boy and that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to take on some sort of like, you know, marginalized person identity of being like the model uh, minority or like anything, but like deep inside of me, there are feelings where if I'm gonna create something, it has to be better, it has to push forward. There has to be difficult conversations. We have to talk about um, white privilege and, and white feminism and we have to talk about 
that like Latinos in the Bronx and, and, and Afro-Latinos and black people were activists and are activists and do this work and how our cultures have been taken from us and how we, we are struggling to reclaim those things. I have to highlight um, voices of like queer people, queer young people starting revolutions and movements. Like if I don't do this, then what the fuck am I even writing a book for? You know? And what's it like figuring out how to strike that balance between like how much of yourself you put in it versus how much you let Juliet sort of become her own character? I think mostly it was just like letting her be messy. Mm -hmm. Because there was a part of me I think at first that kind of wanted to pull her in that she would always have the best one-liner or that <laughs> she'd always like be the funniest or like get it. It's unfair to think that just because like you're queer or you're you know of a certain age that you always have to say the right thing. Um, I think that's like a damaging narrative that even in like um, our activist spaces or our QPOC spaces that you have to be this perfect uh, person that knows all the right things to say. I think that's like so hard to live up to. Yeah, there's one point where she she struggles particularly figuring out how to like navigate pronouns. What was the inspiration for putting a situation like that in? I think that I have had situations where people have treated me uh, negatively because I didn't know all the things or because I've said things wrong or written wrong things. It's important for Juliet to have a moment where someone is putting some pressure on her to know her stuff. Like if you're gonna be part of this community, you should know pronouns, you should this, you should that. I sometimes prefer or appreciate when people move with gentleness with me, but like you cannot expect gentleness, especially when like interacting with people who come from communities that have been traumatized. Because one person can move with gentleness and someone moves with a little more urgency and someone just fucking expects you to be better. Like neither one of those is right or wrong, but what they both do is push Juliet to to act and to think and to question like how she is moving in the world. There's not a lot of models for us. You know, we we just kind of run into it. We run into queerness. We run into like navigating uh, POC spaces and trans spaces and I can't model everything but whatever I can like offer out into the world um, I feel like it's my job or my duty you know to honor where we all come from and like offer examples who do you think this book is for I think it's for it should be for everyone I think everybody should read this book but if I had to like, if there was like a million people in the crowd, I have to be honest, I would find like the most awkward, like frizzy haired, like chubby brown girl and be like, here, <laughs> I wrote this for you. Like, I promise, like this is out of all of the shit in this world that is not made for you. This is the thing that is made for you. And it, it comes with love and it comes with me honoring you just as you are. I really and wholly firmly believe in the power of community, um, especially when like pockets of the community can like heal each other and organize and work together and love each other very much. Like the book is so much about love and the ways that we can exchange love and hold on to love with each other without um, giving each other a pass. You know what I mean? And so I think that as we move forward in love and we handle all the complicated shit that comes with it like the community as a whole can be stronger and so i think if you're invested in love and community then juliet takes a breath is the book for you you are a gem among humans <laughs> i am so happy to know you <laughs> God, I cannot say enough good things about Gabby. And speaking of that crowd of million people, I can't afford a million books because I make $50 a month on Patreon, but I do have five copies Ooh. of Juliet Takes a Breath, which are going to go to you all. She's going to sign five copies of these uh, of this book for uh, for five lucky people. Um, there's going to be a link below in the description that says how you can get this book. So you're not going to sign them yet no because um because we're gonna wait to personalize them but do you want to like draw some stuff in them <laughs> just to oh, say so people that you know did? okay yeah um <laughs> so i'm just gonna make little stars of them oh my god what yeah. is that even? <laughs> <laughs> you get one that looks like i made a mistake that <laughs> <laughs> because i can't draw <laughs> it's a sun with eyebrows <laughs> all right 
The book is Juliet Takes a Breath, once again, available on Amazon, hopefully soon to be available in every bookstore in the country, if not the world. If you are in Chicago, it is available at Women and Children's First Bookstore. Perfect. Mm -hmm. One of the best bookstores of all time. Yes. And that's all. Please subscribe, follow, do all those things on the internet. Thank you so much again, Gabby, for being here. No problem. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Goodbye. Bye. I can't even draw a moon. <laughs> I can draw a tree. You can draw a full moon. It's a circle. <laughs>